Hi there YouTubers, welcome to a new service video from Sorts 6233 and on the bench tonight I have this 062 it's a Collet Class 5600 running number 6064 made by Trip. Possibly Glasgow Motor Rail. Um, so let's have a look at it. It's complete apart from the chimney cap. Uh, it's an 062 and it has shoes pickups on one side. It has these older type couplers, buffers intact front and back. And apart from that, and the fact that it's a bit play worn. It looks in serviceable conditions. So, it's a non runner, and the bit, next thing to do, we'll try it on a piece of track. It's running very roughly, but at least it's running. And like all of these locomotives, oops, try switching it off and running at the same time. And like all of these locomotives, it's difficult to know when they were last used. It might just be part of a collection, just called an on runner to get it sold, um, but maybe need a good service. I think it looks promising. So, in that case, let me move this out of the way. Bring this in and we'll start to dismantle this and see where it goes. Looking for some form of release for the casing, uh, I notice there's a chimney screw, so that seems like an obvious place to start. That comes out there. And it's still reluctant to split, although it seems to be free, but the coupler fed through the buffer bar, held on with this screw. So I'm going to remove that and see if that helps. And there we go. So a nice heavy die cast body. Uh, probably I would like to strip that back and repaint it. And this is what we're interested in, the chassis. Standard three pole motor with external brushes. Uh, I wonder if this would be a precursor to motors like the XO3, XO4. Have a look at the brushes. That looks pretty solid for its age. And you can see, oops, the other one is also looking in pretty good shape. The commutator. Well, obviously, need a bit of a clean, and there are plenty of bearings that could be lubricated. I'll check out the magnet later on. Deciding on how to progress, I think that the mechanism would benefit from a good clean and lubrication, so I'm obviously going to have to strip it down. The motor seem to be secured, I think, possibly a screw underneath from the main chassis, which suggests I might have to release this pickup. Uh, the, warn the orange wires, I presume, are from the front and rear shoes, and the other pickup, the other rail, would be through this copper strip through the chassis to the motor and fed and oh, oh, I just noticed something, this cannot do it any good, just in there I caught glimpse of a little bit 
it's a staple that isn't going to help. Obviously it hasn't shorted it out at the moment, but it may have done it at some other stage. Rear Pony, which was released when I took off the shoe, uh, the contact plate, uh, is clipped around the chassis and it's held on by this chassis weight. So I'm just going to take it off, get it out of the way. Good. There, in there, and out comes the rear pony and coupler assembly and just in here there's a screw, is that the one I'm looking for? It's not yet there's a base plate here so I'm just going to undo it Let's just screw out And all well, that gives me access to the wheel axles. Does the wheel set come out? Yes, it does. And it has just started to rain after about four or five days of brilliant sunshine. Just in there, that screw is one I believe holds the motor on. So before I take that out, I'm going to disconnect these pickup wires from the shoes. Oops, trying to get hold of it, there we go. And there. And there. Now I'll take the screw away. And I can feel the motor slightly off. And there we are. As I tried to remove the brushes, I discovered that each brush is held in by an inward hook through this upper plate, which means that the brush basically has to swivel across the face of the motor. That means I need to take this part out. It's held in by a little top plate and a screw and one of these suppression coils is soldered to the body of the motor and that would be the neutral return. So I'm going to unsolder that, take out the screw, that should allow the brush assembly to come out and release and reveal the comic data. done all that, I'm now going to check the commutator for continuity between the three sets of coils. First of all, a little mark on one of the coils to let me know when I'm back at the beginning and also if it slips I can always start from there again. So looking at the motor, I've got a plate and a commutator here and here. And I'll get 8 ohms, turn around the coil, here and here, 7.9, close enough, and that one there, 
8.9, go on, 8.2. So, same reading through all three sets of coils, that suggests that they are probably okay. Looking at the brushes, they seem to be fairly solid. There is, of course, a curve in them because of contact with the commutator. Uh, but I have to order a chimney pot for the, um, the locomotive. So if we're going to a TTRCA uh, website, and if they have any brushes, I might just buy a set of brushes as well. Straightforward lubrication, the forward bearing there, and that will work its way through. The rear bearing seems accessible through this hole. So just drop some oil in there, and that should be good. I'm wondering if there should be a, a reservoir plug in there, but uh, I'd have to investigate that. At the moment, that's the bearings lubricated, and now I'm going to reassemble the motor and test it. The brushes fit under these springs, which are relatively powerful for the size. And I have to separate the springs, so I'll brush in there, and hook through the brush retaining plate, if I can get that in. Nearly there. Come on, and again. Right. Screw out. And should be this way. Right. Okay, let's try this again. Feed the brushes over the top of the bracket. And they work down there. Yep, that's in. Just get it in. And then secured. Whoops. Come on. Good. Whoops. And now the little screw through the top. Quick check, brushes seem to be in place, motor running freely. And one thing to do is re solder this contact at the top of the motor. I've got about 5 volts unloaded at the end of my probes, so let's see what happens when I attach it to the motor. Uh, the voltage has dropped to 3, it's drawing 90 milliamps, which I suppose is quite, uh, probably quite hefty for a motor of this nature, but it's running, it's running quietly, it's running smoothly. So it looks as if we could get our little uh, collet running once more. It's time for the rebuild. So the motor has to fit the chassis, but before I do so, the idler wheel assembly has to fit in there. It's held in place by this little bracket, by two screws. So I put this front screw in. First of all, and I think the bracket will simply slide in there. And then I take the smaller screw, which has a different size of head, goes into there. There we 
go. Alright, quick check. I forgot to put some grease into that. So I'll just apply a little bit of grease to the wheel. Come around there and there. And just a touch of oil onto the bearing. And that should be okay there. Right, make sure these are tight. Right, so now I'll fit the motor. And sit the motor onto the chassis and it should nestle in there. Screw from underneath should sort of fall down there. Catch the thread. Check that it's lined up okay. Activates the idler, a little bit of tension, and I can now apply a little bit of power and hopefully it should run. So the drive gear is now up and running, bit of reverse. And another quick check. No, I haven't done that. I have to rewire the wires onto the suppression coil. Testing as we go along. Check that the motor's still working. Good. And then from forward pickup and the rear pickup. So we're looking good. Turning my attention to the wheel set, I see the coin rods are held in by three hex screws. Um, so I can take those out. The centre axle is the drive axle. And I'm looking at this pair. There's a groove on the tyre. So that suggests there should be traction tyres on this. So I'm going to have to order those up as well. I'm going to fit the wheel set. The wheels for the traction tyres go to the rear of the locomotive. The drive gear goes in the centre, obviously. And the other set go to the front. Sits in there nicely. So, a little bit of lubrication on the bearings. And there we go. I should perhaps have fitted the shoes before I did the wheels. So I'm just going to remove these again to easily put back and fit the shoes. The shoes are reflectively symmetric one for the front, one for the rear. When I put, took them off, they were on the left-hand side as I looked at it, which I think was that way. Although it doesn't really matter because we can switch them around later on. So, shoot it in there, held in by a little bracket that slides in there over the top and then a countersunk screw will hold the assembly together and here again uh, this way and there like there and the other screw which is this one get in there and just try to catch the thread there we are 
Now it's time for the base plate assembly. This sits over the axles. This is down there. There's a couple of little hooks that hook on to the shoe supports held in by a little countersunk screw. And that should catch about there. Good. At this point, I really need to fit the rear pogey, which slides over the back of the frame, sits over that pin, and there's a little retaining clip which sits in place. The copper contact goes behind the front and the rear wheels. Obviously, on the opposite side of the locomotive from the shoes. Just making sure that slides in. I think it's been slightly distorted at some time. Yep, so I flattened it out and it just slides in behind this wheel very neatly. Line it up with the two retaining screws in the base plate. Then comes this contact accelerator, which is a spring contact, lines up there. And finally, or not finally, then the fixing bracket again with two screws. And I have to line all of these up, make sure they all line up together and with the holes in the chassis and now I can insert two longish countersunk screws they go through there and there should sink down and a quick check before I tighten up I got the copper plate this bracket here has come out and that should sit in the pin. Right. So let me put that down. This bracket fits in there. That one in there. And that all holds it together. So I'll just tighten these up. Right. Rear wheel tongues, front wheels tongue. Of course the middle ones are driven by the motor. So a little bit of lubrication into the rear pony axles as well on here. Now I'm going to apply some power again. First of all to the motor, make sure everything is okay. Right, and now I'll try it from the pickups. Yeah. That's the one pickup and the forward pickup. So we're now able to pick up power from the tracks. I put the chassis onto rollers. And of course, there's no pickup from the rollers to the shoes. So I've connected up a link from this shoe to this rail. So hopefully this motor should run. Probably just a little bit of voltage and I can show you there's hardly anything there and the way it goes. And if I just wind it down, reverse the current and there we go. So it's looking good. I was hardly any voltage in that at all. So I think we're going to get a nice little runner soon. Fit the con rods. First of all, I make sure that the closest holes are for the front two sets of wheels and the further away one goes to the rear. So the centre wheel, of course, is fixed. Front wheel, I can be taped. Line that up there. And I should be able to line up the other one and install these little hex headed screws. 
I don't have the right driver for that, so I'll just have to do it finger tight and then use another means of tightening. One and two and three. Should just about cover them all. Oops, little tweak. Uh huh. And the one in the centre came out because it was only in loosely. Right, so that's corn rod on the first side, which is the uh, left hand side as we go forward. I'll tighten those later and I'll just repeat the process here. I've had to leave the local for a couple of days um, and I've just come back in this morning just testing it. You'll never notice the corn rods have been removed because it was binding. And I thought it might be a quartering problem. I tried tweaks, but that didn't seem to help. And then with the corn rods off, I apply power. And you can see that it's binding even in this state. Don't know if you can hear it, but it's struggling. And that is tightening up. So, there's a motor to this idler wheel, to this wheel here. Somewhere in this chain, I think there's a problem. I've removed the undercarriage, removed the wheelbase, so all I have is a motor attached to the idler. Apply some power. And it's binding still. After a lot of trial and error, the main problem was that as the worm screw was turning the idler, it got to a certain position. In fact, I'd marked it on the idler. Let me try and find it for you. Whoops, where is it? Uh, there. Yeah, the black mark. Right, I've got the wrong hand, I think. Yeah, sorry. The black mark indicates where it would jam every time. So I'm pretty sure it's something to do with the idler wheel. So I checked for cracks, checked for broken teeth, there's nothing there. But the one thing I did discover, and if I can reproduce it somehow, I had it there, that is if I just do that, to each tooth, then they run quite smoothly until I get to this one and it jams. I had a look and there seemed to be a bit of metal debris, would that be a good word? Jammed in the nylon tooth. So I'm going to try and remove it. And would you look at that, that's less voltage than I had earlier on when it jammed. Turning in the correct direction, removing that little bit of debris from the tooth of the idler. And there we go. And swap direction. Okay, right, let's try and put this machine back together again. So I'm starting the rebuild again and I have the wheels held in with the base plate and if I just apply a small voltage, it runs fine. Once I get the connection, okay. And that is running in the offending direction. And as you can see, it's running quite smoothly. It is noisy. Um, but I think that's probably to do with the motor. But I can live with that. I 
this stage I'm going to check pick up from the shoes so there's one shoe and then there's a, a very convenient earth connection there and the rear shoe onto this screw and so it's running from the pickups and again the drive wheel is running quite smoothly whereas before it was jamming so now we can fit the coin rods on the left hand side as the train would move forward it's not a problem I can tighten these hex nuts later on but when I come to this side there is something which I didn't notice Actually, I did notice, but I never paid much attention to it. And that is, these wheels have a crank stem. Here and here. The coin rod fits over them. The screw goes on top, all in place. But this one, the crank has broken off. So I will definitely need a new wheel. And I know I can get one from the Spears catalogue and TTRCA. And this is a moment I've been trying to achieve. I'm going to apply a bit of power. And look at that. I originally thought that jamming and the snagging was quartering. And then I tweaked one of the wheel sets. And then found it wasn't that. So when I put it back up together, it started snagging again, so I had to untweak. Yeah, that nylon wheel is making a lot of noise. But, it's not too bad. Probably quartering will need another little tweak to undo my tweaks. So, I'll attend to that, get it up the rolling road, and we'll see it move. I'm going to make this the end of part one of my call at restoration for a number of reasons uh, one is I'm having a little bit of a problem with it I think I know what the problem is um, but I need some time to work on it second thing is I'm just about to head down south I'm going to Tings the international end gate show and then I'll be on holiday for a couple of weeks after that so I'll be a wee while before I can get back to it so, in case I forget everything I've done, I might as well just say, this is the end, part one. But I can promise you, you haven't seen the end of this little call it. So until then, uh, I hope you like what I've done. Uh, hopefully I've got some comments that people might offer some advice or suggestions. Um, and uh, if you want to just keep looking, subscribe so you don't miss the next exciting episode of this Call It Restoration. So until I see you again, folks, uh, take care of yourself, take care of everybody else, be good, be happy, keep training. Bye for now.